There's something uniquely discouraging about sandy soil. You water it, and it drains in seconds. You mulch it, and the sun bakes it dry anyway. You plant into it, and roots seem to just hover, never anchoring, never thriving. And worst of all, no matter how many times you dig, you never find worms. Not one. Sandy soil may be easy to work with, but it's nearly impossible to bring to life because there's no structure, no moisture retention, and no biological pull to keep microbes and worms in place, but that's exactly where the right kind of slurry comes in. Not just water and compost, but a sticky, biological blend that holds onto moisture like a sponge and delivers food signals that scream to nearby worms. This is home. If you've struggled with wormless, dry, sandy beds, you're about to learn a method that changes everything. This isn't another compost tea or mulch trick. It's a targeted hydration and humus building formula that sticks to sand, coats soil particles, and creates underground microhabitats where earthworms can thrive. And the best part? It uses just a few simple ingredients, aloe vera, molasses, and compost extract, but combined in a way that mimics the slow-release moisture systems of forest soils. Think of it as a fungal starter, a microbial tea, and a worm buffet all in one. The secret behind this method lies in how earthworms and microbes respond to moisture. Sandy soil drains so quickly that even if worms crawl in after a rainfall they're gone within hours. There's nothing to hold them there. No sponge-like humus, no microbial signals. But if you can create a sticky slurry that doesn't evaporate or leach out, you can slow the water down, coat the sand, and start the chain reaction of soil life. Aloe vera is the key to this. It's not just a hydration plant, it's full of mucilage, enzymes, and saponins that cling to surfaces and feed soil bacteria. When blended with molasses, a sugar-rich microbial fuel, and combined with compost extract, essentially microbe-rich water, you get a slurry that's thick enough to hold its place in sand and alive enough to kickstart humus formation. To make this slurry, start with one large aloe vera leaf. Peel it, scoop out the gel, and blend it with half a liter of dechlorinated or rainwater. To that, add two tablespoons of unsulfured molasses and one cup of compost extract. You can make compost extract by soaking a handful of mature compost in water for an hour and straining out the solids. Blend the mixture until it turns into a smooth, golden gel. The texture should be thicker than water, but pourable, something that coats your hands if you dip them in. That texture is important. It tells you the slurry will cling to sand particles rather than draining straight through. Okay, so apply this slurry directly into shallow trenches or pockets across your sandy bed. Try to focus on areas that get morning sun, but, you know, still retain some afternoon shade if possible. Once you've poured it in, just cover those spots with a thin layer of moist mulch, like dried leaves, grass, or even shredded bark. This mulch it really holds in the moisture, but honestly the real work is happening underneath. The slurry starts to seep between the grains of sand, coating them with sticky aloe and all those microbial sugars. Fungi begin to colonize the organic sugars, and as they do, they actually knit those particles together. The soil starts forming these little aggregates, tiny clumps that are basically the first signs of humus. But here's what uh, makes this method truly transformational. Earthworms detect the microbial heat, the moisture, and the sugar compounds. Even if they're nowhere to be seen now, they'll start to migrate in as this underground system stabilizes. The mucilage from the aloe holds moisture around their bodies, making the environment way more comfortable for them. The molasses and compost microbes, those give the worms immediate food, and the newly forming fungal structures actually give them shelter and structure, kind of like a forest floor. Within days, you'll start noticing the first small castings appearing near your slurry zones. And within weeks, your once wormless sand will begin to smell and feel like actual living soil. What makes this sticky slurry different from just watering with compost tea is, honestly, its staying power. Compost teas, you know, often just wash right through sandy soil. They do provide nutrients, but not really any structure. The aloe molasses blend, on the other hand, clings, feeds, and actually builds. It turns that loose, structureless sand into a connected network of moist, humus-forming pathways. And once worms get involved, they start aerating, tunneling, and casting, all of which, well, deepen the humus transformation. 
This slurry method works especially well in raised beds filled with sand-heavy mixes, those dry corner patches of a yard, or really anywhere that water just won't stay put. It's also a fantastic pre-treatment before planting moisture-loving crops like tomatoes, squash, or melons. Rather than battling poor retention all season, you're basically setting up a living water reservoir underground before the roots even grow. You're not just watering the soil, you're actually training it to hold water and grow life. If you've tried everything, mulch, compost, even store-bought worm castings, but your sandy soil still refuses to come alive, this method might be the key you've been missing. Nature doesn't just rely on compost. It relies on sticky sugars, microbial slurries, and root-like structures to hold everything together. And by mimicking that with aloe, molasses, and compost extract, you're stepping into nature's blueprint for humus. If this guide gave you something new to try, or if you're ready to finally fix your sandy soil for good, hit the subscribe button and share this with a gardening friend. At Hydrohaven, we believe every soil can be rebuilt, from cracked clay to blowing sand when you work with nature instead of against it. Sometimes, all it takes is the right sticky solution to turn nothing into something rich and alive. Try it out and let the worms and the humus do the rest.